because so many times people love looking at the little birds, they buy the birds, they don't really know what they need to get started and to be successful. So I think this is really going to help you to know kind of what breed you need or what you're looking for. Square footage, housing, how to feed them, how to take care of them. So we'll roll right in here. Um, I'm going to give a little plug here. Uh, okay. Uh, there you go. Okay. I'm going to give a little plug to Kelly and the Country Max team. They have put together, if you visit the Country Max website, a wonderful new chick learning life micro site. So if you look in their big website, and you can find this. But if you go to this page, number one, it's going to tell you a ton of different uh, things in here about uh, you know videos uh, from Neutrina, uh, how to raise chickens. There's also um, Arrivals and orders. Um, we do have another seminar coming up next Wednesday, which is virtual. And that's going to be moving from this, the baby phase, into layers and summer feeding and more of housing, what you need to do when your chicks get older. So that's going to be 7 p.m. next or next Wednesday, night, April 12th. So you can register for that one if you're interested and be in the comfort of your own home, not have to come out. Um, also, if you skip to the next page, Kelly, what I really like is you can check, uh, this is just a screenshot I took for a couple of weeks ago, but you can check every day to see which stores have what kind of birds. So if you're interested in specific breed, you can check online. Also, if they don't have the breed that maybe you want in the store, they have an awesome special order program. And it's actually four pages long of different kinds of birds. So it's gonna overwhelm you, um, and, but they're, they are taking special orders. Birds are at a premium this year, guys, because I know that we're estimating bird sales to be up about 200% from last year. Everybody is, is looking at the price of meat and eggs and, and really interested in this uh, this enthusiastic hobby. So it may take a little longer on the special order to get your birds in, but the nice thing about that is by that time, hopefully we will be through winter or into nice spring summer weather, which I'm so used to. Okay. Uh, I talked about that. So what we're going to do, as I said, this is kind of what we're going to talk about. Is anybody, is everybody interested just in laying birds, not new birds, ducks, turkeys, and things like that? Okay, laying birds. We'll focus mainly on that. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the breeds of birds. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, cold hardy birds, because, you know, my mind comes out here, we need to be pretty hardy birds in this type of uh, environment. So I have, like, three levels here. Level one being a great beginner's chicken. Uh, they lay eggs well and they're really friendly. Level two, they'll lay eggs well. They're friendly most of the time, but there are some special considerations to think about. Level three, these may be some of the birds that are more of the fancier breeds. You might see them as silkies, phantoms, uh, Polish. They can they not be ideal for beginners, especially beginners with small children, just because these birds are a little flighty. So I sometimes you go in stores, you see those really cute little phantom chicks. They're really tiny. Uh, they don't lay a lot of eggs. Um, they're really popular in the show world, but they are the smallest little bird with the biggest personality out there. Uh, and they are a little flighty and not my first choice for somebody who has young kids or just getting started. Okay, so we're going to go through some of the tried and true breeds. The Rhode Island Red and the Red and the Red. Um, great, great extra large egg layer, um, above average, and when I say production, some of these birds, you're going to see 260 to 300 eggs per year when they get into their, their cycle. Um, I'm not going to talk about meat production, because most of these birds that you're going to buy as layers, you're going to keep them around for two to four seasons, and you're going to want to probably add to your flock every year, so you continue having a uh, good layer uh, production every year. These are wonderful behaviors, very docile. You can free range them. They like to gain the climate. Yes, ma'am. You can eat it, absolutely. But after two or three seasons, I'm not going to say it's going to be the most tender chicken barbecue you're going to have. It's more of a stream type chicken, you know, for soup or that type of thing. Yes, they, any bird that you is not laying anymore, you certainly can butcher and eat. There's a specific kind of bird called meat bird, typically Cornish rocks which those are designed just for meat. They do not like eggs ever. So if you see those, those are strictly meat birds. Those are the ones that those are meant to be fed and in the freezer in eight to 10 weeks. Yes, sir. So how long do they produce? 
as I said, about two to three seasons really well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's on average. Then they will start to decline. And there's a lot of different reasons that they may uh, may not produce. Um, it's definitely in the winter time. We need some lighting and things like that. We're going to cover a little bit more of that stuff next week's seminar. Uh, but that's a really good question. So life of a chicken four to five years. I mean, you had chickens. How long you had chickens? Yeah, we've had chickens for like I would say eight years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just. And, and a lot of the times as they get older and they stop playing, they're your pet by that time. So, you know, you're just going to keep them around because you love that. And she's your baby, <laughs> just like your dog or cat. Yes. Can they keep them against a cat? I don't even have chickens because I'm in a Siberian musky <laughs> um, and I travel too much. Um, predators are all, always a concern, but they can have 14 miles an hour. I mean, they can, but. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I want to cat in your bed. A hawk? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll talk about that when we get into how we Okay, so this one is a really good choice. Rhode Island Red. Next one, Orpingtons. This is a beautiful bird, buff Orpingtons. These are uh, a little smaller egg, but they are the friendliest bird out there. Um, really good. And I'm going to talk about brooding just for a minute. So anybody know what I mean by when I say a bird is brooding or brooding? Yeah, well, basically, a bird, some birds have natural genetic instincts and they want to sit on eggs. That's, you know, they're, they're bent to after they become a hen. They want to hatch eggs. But if there's the eggs are not fertilized, obviously there's must be nothing to hatch. So when you get later on in life, and they are laying their eggs, you might find one that sits in the nest or sits in the nest box and just wants to sit on those eggs. And you know, she'll lay an egg every day and she'll just be sitting on them for that cycle the, that she thinks they're going to have is about 20 more days, but nothing ever hatches. So those some of these birds to do to deal with some of the broodiness, you have to kind of kick them out of the nest box. Um, they get warmer. Um, so sometimes cooling them down a little bit stops that broodiness. A lot of different things, but when I, it's brooding up here, please don't take that as a, you know, oh, I don't want this chicken because it might be broody. It's just a natural instinct for, for a hen. So there's just some breeds that are a little bit more broody than others. We can certainly do that. These are very, very cold hard to, for winter time. And just, just to get into winter time for a minute, I mean, as long as birds have a place to go and rest at night in a coop and it's dry and it's free of drafts and it's not damp, they can survive super well. I mean, they kind of eat themselves. They all sit next to each other on the roofs. So, you know, even when it comes below zero degrees, they do just fine, as long as if they don't get wet and there's no trash. I don't I, I don't really recommend it because you really still want some ventilation um, during the other times of the year. So to insulate during winter, they give their own insulation because you know they're giving off body heat. Light? Yes, we're gonna talk about heat lights. Um, also, okay. Hard rock again, beautiful choice. It will still with cold, cold weather nicely. Um, big eggs, uh, great production. Osterloid. Now the reason I like this guy. Our girl. Uh, this is a black ostrilor, but it, after these are grown up, you can't really tell by the picture, but out in the sunlight, they have this absolutely gorgeous dark green tint to their black feathers. And also, it's a really good idea if you're going to get chickens and you have to buy a New York minimum six, okay? Um, you can mix and match them. So you can mix and match any breed that there is available, uh, unless it's a special order, then I think there's a minimum. I would definitely recommend getting a couple of black bird breeds like the ostrilor, because these birds will deter hawks and crows from coming in and eating your birds. Because hawks and crows see a level blackbird and they say, ooh, that's one of me. It, that's one of my predators. So it's a really, really good idea to have a couple of black ostrilorks in your group. Okay, you can only have four. I think New York State is six. Yeah, you have to purchase six at a time. New, New York State, State law says six. Pennsylvania, I don't think it's anywhere. It's four. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if it says New York, that's the law of New York State. That's a New York State law. Okay. And part, part of the reason is, you know, you think about it, one of the 
No, some of the things that I want to don't check for the, the Eastern, they don't do well as one. They're all foggy with the internet. So it means to sell several together. So it's always going to say zero. I think it's two for dumps and turkeys rather than as a percentage. I'm not, I think it's also six. Really? Six, yeah. Six. But only they're safe, right? Okay, so the offshore, great for. Next one, Wyandotte. Now, Wyandotte, this is the silver lace Wyandotte, beautiful bird. Again, uh, a light, light to rich ground code egg above production, um, real good behavior. And another thing, it's a really infrequent food. And also the wine dots you can have, that's a silver lace. I think there's gold wine dots. There's several different colors of the wine dots. Okay, next, Easter eggers. These are the ones that uh, lay the pretty color in it. So the green, blue, pink, or multi. And one thing I learned from Twain last week, I think somebody asked him on the call was, um, if they start laying green eggs, will they always lay green eggs? That one specific group. If one lays pink eggs, will they always lay pink? Yes, they will. So I did not know that. Um, their egg size is pretty good, uh, pretty good production, um, very poor for meat. So these are ones that probably has three to the meat size. You know, but when she expires, she's probably not going to get much out of her as far as we'll see her up on people. Um, they do, they're pretty hardy. The smaller body size makes them good in the heat, um, and they have a really small comb, so you don't have to worry about frostbite or anything like that. In the heat, I mean, water is essential. And that's why I say don't insulate because you're going to still want ventilation for those birds. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about summer heating next week. And, and it's it's basically just you've got to have fresh water. The meat birds, that's a whole other story. They do not do well in heat. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, I would say absolutely. Yeah. What do you have? Yeah, do? I have pretty much every type of miserable um, on this list. Yeah, they're all good together. Plymouth Rock, is that the bar? No, that's a different, that's different. It's the same, it's a different color of a bar. Plymouth Rock, the bar rock. Any of the barred rock are in between that thing. So you may go into a store and you see, oh, first of all, when you go into a store to buy your chips, you're going to see birds that say straight from, and then you're going to see things that say pullings. So if you want all a guarantee or most guarantee that they're going to be all in, you want pullings. If you see straight run, straight run means that they're not set. So it could be roosters or hens. Okay, so the straight runs are a little, little um, less or less expensive usually because that you can't tell if they're male or female, and you may get some roosters, and the other the pullets are uh, just if you want all 99.9% and so it's P-U-L-L-E-T, yes. Okay, now if you go in and then you see those different breeds, so you'll see pullets, Barbara, X-23, you know, something like that. Sex lady, what this is, is this is a way that the hatcheries have actually genetically uh, created a bird, it's a crossbred chicken. And first of all, they're very, very, very cold hardy because they have such good genetics. They give you over 300 eggs a year. And because they, they link these together, you can tell by the color of the bird which is male and which is female. So the sex link in the one, and I can't remember the term. Black sex links, um, the black ones are female, the, like the redder ones are male. So it's a really good insurance policy for us when it says sex link that you're getting, you know, what what you want, bullets or, or, or roosters. Okay, so this is some of the things you're going to need. We're going to go through each one of these individually, so go ahead and go on to the next one. Um, brooder options. Your brooder is what you're going to use for that first couple weeks. Well, two to four weeks at home with the chips. Now, you can use a wooden cardboard box, but I highly advise against it because you will be having a light that you have to hold on to over, have over them. Um, the cardboard, I don't want you to start an early part of being in a fire. So I really recommend these type, type, type of tanks are great. Um, and also just anything round, even a tote would work. Uh, be creative, just please don't use cardboard. 
So next. So you're also going to need a heat lamp. These little guys, they need to be at 90 to 95 degrees for the first couple of weeks. Okay. So there's two different kinds of bulbs you can buy. Um, when you buy a lamp, so you're going to need a lamp and a bulb. First of all, buy two bulbs because, you know, we always run out of bulbs when we don't expect it. And if, if they're losing out in the garage and you're sleeping and the bulb goes out and that temperature drops, chicks are not going to make it. So there's a white bulb and a red bulb. And there's really no difference, the heat or the wattage. Um, the red bulb is actually used more in commercial poultry houses where there's a lot, a lot of chickens and chicks hatching because the red deters those birds from pecking at each other if any of them get any you know, cuts or scrapes. Um, chickens are carnivores. You will go out, you will see them eat mice and snakes and rodents as they grow up. Yeah. Okay, so another trivia question for you. Uh, what and what prehistoric animal is the chicken descended? Okay, what dinosaur is no, everybody says that because it's got the name. No? And I, you know, I think I was wrong last night. It's not pterodactyl. Where's the next question? <laughs> not the bird, believe it or not, not the bird one. Any guesses? You're good, you got it. He wins another prize, Tyrannosaurus Rex, believe it or not. So think of the you know, they're carnivores, for chickens are descended from. So just make sure you have enough bulbs available. Keep moving us along here. <laughs> and for you though, you guys that just snuck in, make sure I do that. Uh, make sure you she's gonna probably bring her on a notepad so you can find out what she needs to us. So you're gonna need some bedding, okay? I recommend pine shavings. Do not use cedar shavings. The cedar shavings have that cedar oil on them, and it's kind of caustic and, and toxic to that little bird's skin. Now, good trick is if you put the shavings. Over newspaper or over those puppy pads, the puppy feed pad, it works great because it does soak up some of the uh, moisture, maybe if you spill water, et cetera. And then you can roll it up like a broom and pull it out. So it's a little easier to clean. Um, the other thing, say, uh, there are some different beddings out there that I've seen. I've actually seen like puppy grounds. I don't recommend them. I think they can get stuck in the feed feet and weeks. This is really your easiest way. And do make sure you pick up those uh, paper over there on the table um, of some coupons for Petri Mix. And I know that the pine chili days are on. Okay, so feeders and waters. You're definitely gonna need different sizes of these as your birds grow and as your flock grows. So if you're gonna buy 25 chicks, you're gonna need a one gallon water. If you're gonna buy six, I would recommend, uh, and I saw on the shelf out there, but for the smaller little four gallon. And the court feeders, those will be fine. Um, you're going to want to provide roughly an inch of space, feeder space for chicks. So, some of these type of feeders down here are really good. Um, and here's the key if, you, if you're getting your birds from Country Max and you're buying them here at the store, picking them up, they have already been fully rehydrated for the first four to six hours. So, when they get them in here from the mail, I mean, literally, they have hatched the day before and they've been flown in. In, from the post office, and the only thing those little guys have had to eat, you know, is mom's milk. I mean, it came out of the egg, it's been, that's the only nourishment it's had. So for that first four to six hours, we really need to flush out that system to get that chick rehydrated, because they would freeze stress. So if you ever come into a store and you see that they only have water, so if you have a good team in the store, there's probably a reason for that, because they just came in and they're probably not even ready to sell them yet because they're trying to get them back in that hydrated stage. Next. Now, the other thing that could happen, since mom's yolk is the only thing that that chick has been eating, two unique things about chickens. One, they don't have teeth. And number two, um, they have like one itty outy is what I call it, and it's called their vent. So they pass their egg through their vent, they pass anything more through their vent. Sometimes that, that actually disgusts my husband, but I'm, that's, that's the way a chicken is made. They're actually these creatures. So that first gunky stuff, that yolky stuff, if we don't get that flushed out of that baby chick, 
Has anybody ever heard of hasty butt? Okay, so hasty butt is a lovely term, but that's exactly what it is. It's kind of that funky stuff that comes out uh, if the bird is not completely migrated and sticks over their vent. So when that happens, they can't catch the needle, they can't do anything. It makes them pretty uncomfortable and be very difficult. So there's a couple different things in some of the chick starters that we have that is really helping prevent hasty butt. And also, if you do see that, don't just rip it off. Um, I recommend taking that little chicken's butt and sticking it in a warm coffee pot and just cutting it the towel and wiping it off. Again, if it's been rehydrated and everything, you should never see that. If you're buying where they come directly to your phone, they you know, pick them up, just be aware of that. Some other things to have. Um, electrolytes are really good for personal days, again, just to ensure that they aren't drinking. I don't really, I'm going to talk a little bit about lighting in, here in a minute. That RX is a great product um, just for your toolbox, uh, kind of your first aid kit. It's a uh, poultry all around. It can be used for sniffles. It can be used for cuts and scrapes. The other thing is cream probiotics. Um, just like you can, and I use yogurt for your digestive balance and cream probiotics, some of the feed, like our nutrient neutralized, already has that in it, and it does ensure that we keep that gut. Okay, so setting up the brooder. Um, we want to keep them warm, comfortable, close to feed water, and help them adjust. So setting up the lights before you get the birds, setting up the brooder would be ideal. So say you're going to come and pick up your birds, or you plan to get that set up a couple of days before. Have a stack of plane. Next slide. So here's just my guide on heat lamps. Um, you can just watch the chicks basically, and they're going to tell you if they're too hot or too cold. So in these, you can see that this is the lamp, and these are on the outside, the little chickens. So in this instance, if they're running away, the outside of the brooder is too hot. So hold the lamp up a little bit. If they're real close, kind of cold, drop the lamp down. You really want to see them kind of spread out like that, kind of even. Now, the other thing, if you see them all huddled on one side, there may be something else going on. There may be a draft. There may be a something that's uh, disturbing them. So, like, don't put your dog kennel up right next to your, 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 your chick box or your chick brooder because that really could uh, change their habits as far as eating and following. Okay. So, food, what food should I have read? Uh, we talked about all this stuff, so keep going. Um, talk about the meat birds. You're going to want for the first 16 weeks of this chick's life a really good chick starter feed. Okay. The chick starter feeds that are available at Country Max or four over there. So we've got the one in the Nature Wise line. I'm going to pass this one around. Um, and first, one that can tell me what, what this has in it that makes it smell so good, get surprised. Um, and then we'll talk about it. Um, but you, you're going to notice that the chick starter feeds are a little higher in protein because we got to get that bird growing. And number two, it, it needs no other supplementation. They should be full feed on this, full water. Okay, so no limit feeding or anything. Okay. Notice that that is a crumpled form, so it really encourages consumption because they are small. They still have a small feed. Anybody got a guess? You are absolutely right, man. He's going to always <laughs> Yeah, there are actually four different herbs that we put in all of our nutrient and HYC oregano, thyme, rosemary, and anise. And we put them in because of the essential oils. And the essential oils is really helping with that tasty butt. It's helping with the immune response. And when you get into the later phase, you're actually seeing about 20% more eggs with the feed that have the essential oils in. So it's just a great overall benefit. She love herbs. So again, something else you don't even have to add to eat for starting. Plus, it, I have that bag open and I have stuff because it just the aroma is awesome. It makes your coop smell nice. The birds love it. So if we're going to go on to the next slide, um, there is one product that they have. I think it's in the 
in their in country mix, um, which is a medicated starch. So let me talk about what the medication does. The only thing the medication does in a starter feed is it takes care of a, a, an issue called toxidium. What that is, it's a parasite that thrives in damp, dirty conditions. And the easiest way to describe what toxidium looks like in baby chicks is it's a really cool, nasty blood layer. They do not do that. Uh, uh, so that the toxidiosis thrives in your soil. So if you're bringing chicks home to a brand new environment and you've never had anything like that, don't do the medication. Okay, you really don't. That's the only thing it's good for. It doesn't take care of any mildew, sickles, anything like that. That's the only thing it's good for. Them. So we have clean and sanitary conditions. Great. Now, where medicated chick feed could be of a benefit is maybe you buy a flock of birds from a neighbor and you really don't know about their soil or their cleanliness, or there's a lot of these swap shop things that go around or auctions, and again, you're not really sure what the bird's background is. Really, maybe a good idea to do the medicated. Now, if for some reason your birds get toxidiosis, I still think the best way to treat that is you can buy some stuff that goes right in the water and put it on to feed it. We are legally, you know, we have to, in the feed mill, you know, we have to only put in a certain amount of the medications are a preventative level. When we get that, it's more of a therapeutic treat right in the spot level when you use the water. So that's it. That's all I want to talk about there. We're not going to talk about meat, but it's only hurt. Okay, so here's your timeline. 16 weeks on start feed, okay? Now, in five to six weeks, you're gonna be moving these chickens into a bigger box. Um, you may still need a little light, okay? Or and warm, depending on our temperature. But once they get their little pin feathers coming in, they're they're pretty well ready to go outside. So, you know, if it's gonna be down to 45, 50, they're gonna do okay. Now, the other thing is um, when you get started, Think about what you're going to do in five, six weeks, because five, six weeks goes fast, and you're going to have to have food. You're going to have to have an outside area for these birds to and live in, because you're not going to want them in your house for your back or your garage forever. So there's a lot of different hoops you can buy that you can that are in green field pin. Get on YouTube, get online. There's just a, a million different things that people do, old sheds, um, and we'll talk about a couple tips uh, as you're kind of Figure out what, what you want to use as your start. Seven to ten weeks, if you have birds now and you want these little ones to be integrated with the flock, that's kind of when you do it. I'll talk about that. At 16 weeks, no months, you're going to move those birds over to a layer feed. Okay. Now you're not going to get eggs the day you change it over to a layer feed. That's going to take a lot because the layer feed, we have a couple different things in there that I should start. Number one, we've got calcium and vitamin D. The one, the one's going to cross. Eggshell, she gets the egg slicer and if it's not gone. There you go. Absolutely. Chick, baby chicks don't need as much calcium because they're not laying eggs yet. So it takes some time, 16 to 24 weeks, for the layer of feed to activate into their system so they start laying eggs. So usually by 24 weeks, you're going to start seeing eggs. They might be little, they might be big, they might, that, that will all even out with the hens and so on. Next. Okay, so here somebody asked, I think in the back, and you asked, like, how many square feet per bird? Overall, I'd like to see about four square foot per bird for a coop. Um, you're going to need some roosts, either uh, you know, branches or rods or something where the chicks are going to want to sit and sleep at night, um, about three feet off the ground. And then you're going to want some nest boxes. And the nest box, People get really creative with these. You can buy them. You can build them. Some people use kind of, you know, buckets to put fancy fabric over them so Betty can go in and have some privacy when she's laying her egg. But you're going to need about one for every three to four chicks. So if you get six chicks, I have a couple of these. Yes. Can you put a fence around there? Yep, we're getting there. Come on. She's oh, right at it. Yeah, so you've got to, again, make sure it is well ventilated. They will naturally come in at night to boost this. So the other thing about the run, yes, you're going to want an area where they can get out. When you build your run, um, you know, there's different dimensions that you're going to want to have so they have some play area. The biggest thing with that is you're going to want to make it predator free. So you're going to want to, I don't, you know, if anybody says chicken wire, chicken wire's got pretty big you know, squares in it. 
I like the really fine, fine wire. Um, I think this twin is one of his favorite things. This red is a little jazz. You stick the little chicken hands in there and you get to your chickens. They are the worst for predators. That and then your your birds, your pops, those things like that. So yeah, on this run, you're probably gonna have to put something over the top and over the sides. And another thing, raccoons are really good with staples, they pull them out. So when you shape really heavy staples when you're building this, it's a really good idea. Yeah, more of a hardware pop. Yeah. Okay, so how much are your birds gonna eat? Um, when they're after chick phase, they're going to eat about roughly, depending on their size and their breed, about one and a half pounds per bird per week. So if you buy six hens, you're going to go through about 30 pounds of female. Okay, these are 50 pound eggs. So I say 50 pound eggs are 10 eggs twice. Okay, if you're finding that you want to do a lot more than that, something else to eat would be okay. So you've got some rats, some mice, rodents, and whatever, they're probably getting it. So again, you're going to want to have a real secure place to have your feed store that can lock down. Um, you know, kind of locks and locks on the outside of that you've got a food that's got the you know, little containers that you see on the outside of the green cell. You know, make sure those can be, can be locked down. All right, so here again is the lineup of feed we've got uh, the Country Heritage line. This is great line, a little bit nicer on your pocketbook as far as price per bag. We have our country feeds and the Neutrina brand. There's some specific products in there. We've got a couple specific duck feeds. Uh, we've got one specifically for uh, free range birds, which we'll talk about. And then we have our nature lines. And the nature lines, I've already talked a little bit about it in this. Uh, but this one is it's got some extra goodies in it. Yes, it's going to cost a little bit more per bag, but you're, we're going to get the best health, the best nutrition. And again, in our research, you're seeing about 10% more eggs. Because you want eggs, you want nice extra large eggs. The other thing that we put in all the nature-wise foods is marigold extract. Can you have any idea where we put that in? What marigold extract does? Oil. Keep out the bugs. No. A lot of people do put marigolds around. Um, and that yeah, that that does keep out bugs, but plant marigolds. But the actual marigold extract makes the yolks bigger, brighter, golden. Okay, so when you, you're going to definitely, you guys have never had a fresh egg over a store bought egg. The first time you crack open, you're going to go. I have I done this sooner because you're going to notice this the uh, fresh egg. Here's the white, the albumin, or the protein parts that stand right up in the middle. The yolk is going to stand right up when you crack. I, from the grocery store, I, you know, I get mad because it runs a little bit. You know, I can't make a nice fried egg because it runs a little bit. Better. So this also has herbs in it that we talked about. And one other really big benefit that I hear a lot from people that are getting started is, do these birds stink? Is this going to be stinky? Well, they're animals. Yes, they. If you don't keep things clean, you're going to get some odor. But this has a product in it, uh, a plant extract called Yucca, Y U C C A. And I tell everybody, yucca keeps the yucca and it helps with the poop odor. So not only because you're going to you're going to get that nice pretty smell from the herbs, you're going to have this other plant extract that helps with the overall poop odor. Okay, keep going. I think I said it all. So we're getting great reviews from the Nature Wise starter. They will have that in this store. I know. Oh, we think tomorrow. Friday. Friday. <laughs> it was supposed to be here last week. We just had some. Touching issues and putting that in the um, So it will be here. You can also always order online and have it at the store here. Um, and I think they're going to be on sale. But the other thing, and I think there's a sheet back there if you can grab it here today. We at Katrina have an awesome deal going on right now. So make sure you pick up one of these coupons. I'll pass them around. Um, this is a $10 off offer. So if you, you're going to get baby chicks. Might as well just scan this little QR code and get all the way over this QR code. It's right up. But in about 10 seconds, you can fill out the name, address, email, and in 20 seconds, you will have a $10 off coupon in your inbox. Now, we have to have that printed off to bring to any of the country next stores to run through their system. If you can't just bring it on your phone, but you know, take one of these, get the coupon ready, um, and then bring it. And then after a couple of weeks, go ask you how the working for you and your chips doing. You answer a few questions, you get another know, It's an awesome deal. 
So pass that around, make sure everybody gets one of those. Okay, next. Uh, okay, talk about all that. Um, okay, so a couple other things. People always ask me about, well, what do, do I need scratch grains? Do I need oyster? Do I need uh, grit? Well, first of all, let's talk about the grit. Grit, uh, chickens don't have teeth. So they actually swallow the feed and it goes into their gizzard. If anyone knows what gizzard is, pull it out of your turkeys, right? That is their grinding area. So you at older birds, you'll see walking around and hanging on little rocks and stuff. And they actually are swallowing those and putting them in their gizzard. So when the feed goes in there, it kind of grinds them up. Those are just kind of little, little grinding. Grit and I I grit out there. If you look at a bag of grit, it's just going to rock. So I always recommend when you start them on your laying feed and with the chick days, have a little container of grit. And also I recommend a little container of oyster shell. What is the oyster shell for? Our shells. Yes, she says she gets the bag. Is there a t-shirt in there? No, I think I got another one in there. Yeah, or she can have the lunchbox. Yeah. <laughs> lunchbox or t-shirt. Perfect. Okay, uh, so that is, yeah, that it, it's already incorporated by the bee calcium into the bee. But that's just an insurance policy that if they want more, we have that. Another thing, how many have heard, oh, well, I'm just, I don't need a wizard shell, I'll just feed eggshells by a pinch. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> because number one, it, 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 it sometimes you get these hens that just develop this really bad habit. Of eating eggs. And they're eating eggs because they saw you giving them eggshells. So think it's okay to eat the eggs. Well, you want to eat the egg. And once you get a hen that starts eating eggs, it's really, really hard to break the egg. Not really, because I mean, this that's exactly what this is. And it's such a, it's so cheap. This is such a better insurance policy. This is, you know, this is, it just it makes them not want to start eating them. Because, you know, usually when we have someone that eats eggs, we probably want to get rid of the issue that stuff. Great question. If, you, if you've ever seen like a magazine from Europe and you always see like a pretty egg basket and eggs sitting on the counter, that's because they don't wash their eggs. There is actually a coating, chicken again, pretty amazing creature. When the egg comes out of the vent, there is a coating on that. If you wash that, then you have to refrigerate. If you don't wash that, you can it'll it'll keep for I think it's like two months or some crazy thing. It, it seems weird, but that coating, if you feel an egg after you pick it up, you know, like right from the chicken, you're gonna feel this egg it's got this weird feeling to it. And that's that's the coating. So. What do you mean? Anything. I mean, I, yeah, I think if you, if you refrigerate them and then you know you because you don't have a chance to wash them, that still doesn't. Now, scratch grains. Scratch grains is something else. Um, and scratch is another something we need to feed, but only feed as a treat. Because scratch, if you look at this when you come up, it can make the core like the meat that's really coarse. That helps grind things in their gizzard. It really gives them nothing else. There's no calcium, there's no protein. So a lot of people sometimes come and say, well, if you eat scratch grains, why not give them no eggs? Well, number one, you don't have enough protein in your diet for egg production. So scratch grains, those grains, you're not buying enough protein. Number two, you're not getting any vitamins and minerals to make a good thing. So scratch, I recommend you can feed it as a treat in the morning or a treat, you know, when you want to get them outside in the morning, can't pull scratch out. Look at outside, they'll be picking up the scratch while you're doing the business inside, putting water, doing the pen, everything. And then five, 10 minutes, that should be enough. They don't need any more. The same with other treats, and there's so many chicken treats on the market. You know, mealworms and little cakes and everything. Those are great. They love them. They love greens. Uh, just make sure you're not feeding so much that it's really hindering and limiting the regular diet. Oh. So some common ways to save money. Um, Switching to a layer feed when I see the first egg. So you don't, you know, you, you don't want to wait till this point because your eggs are not going to be at a good, good point. You want to at 16 weeks switch to the layer feed. Again, you're not going to 
usually won't see egg until 2040. Adding newly hatched baby chicks to an adult flock of chicks. This does not work. There definitely is quarters with any flock, especially if you have older hens, and they will pass in and sometimes farm the baby chicks. If you buy chick starter um, and you don't use it all, say this year's day out, just tape it up and save it for next year. I don't recommend doing that because the vitamin and mineral package, once it's open, it does deteriorate. So you're not getting that full nutritional package. We talked about the grip, the oyster shell. They're not interchangeable. Um, borrowing other people's poultry equipment. This is just biosecurity, guys. I mean, there are a lot of different diseases that come up raising poultry. You heard avian flu, all that type of stuff, salmonella. Um, the coccidiosis, um, just respiratory problems. So, you know, if you're going to buy poultry equipment and from somebody else, sterilize it before you use it. Also, if you're bringing birds home from a flock or maybe one of these auctions or something, quarantine them 30 days from the regular flock. Um, have a specific pair of shoes that you wear in the front of your poop when you're taking to take them off. I, I call them poop shoes. And you know, boots or those sloggers that they sell here, they're awesome for uh, your poop shoes. But that way you're not transporting disease in or out of the shoe. The other thing, don't put your poops right next to your wild bird feeders. Wild birds are the worst, worst for spreading disease. Okay? So just remember that um, a lot of, you know, it, it makes sense to have them together because I think it's a kind of a thing to do, but separate. Uh, Ducklings and baby chicks don't typically go together. Ducks grow faster. They need water. They need to keep their uh, beaks moist and that raise moist, and they're messy. So again, we need to keep those little furry chicks dry and not damp. And uh, the ducks will get them <laughs> every time. The pea pads, the puppy pea pads, work phenomenal with ducks because they make such a mess because they're laying the water. So that's that's a real safe if it's with any birds. Um, not gonna talk about meat birds. Meat birds are laying hands, can't feed them. So. Okay, so you have these birds, they're now five, six, seven, eight weeks old, and maybe you have some birds and you want to move them into. So five to six weeks, they're gonna start to resemble adult birds. Those little pin feathers are gonna grow out, all the new 500 of them. Um, and, and, you know, even though they're starting off at 90 to 95 degrees, the brooder, you can decrease that temperature each week until it's somewhat close to what they like to stuff. So if you're going to now, you're, you're in a real good spot for hopefully, you know, it's going to be warm enough where they're going to acclimate to that 70 degrees. Um, so. so we find that the best way to move chicks outside, and the next slide, um, we don't want any hand house drop. So if you've got existing birds, one of the best things to do is get a separate pen, almost like a dog crate. You can put some of those five, six, seven week old younger birds in that and then set it in your run or your poop with your big birds, or your mature birds. And the reason is they can all look at each other and move along and learn you know, who they are. Humans really can get at them to catch and bug them. Um, and also you're still going to be wanting to feed those babies a chick starter. They're still growing up to 16 weeks from now. They're ready to start out treats. Um, you know, when you can do this, but just again, don't overdo it because you still want to get that whole nutritional package in them. The other thing to do when they're all ready to kind of go into the group together, if you see if they're weeks, they're just kind of getting long, you need know, not too much going on. Make sure, number one, your group is big enough. That's one thing I see a lot of people do. They'll get six or ten chicks this year. We'll add another six to next year, and they won't expand the size of the food for their run and get overcrowded. And that's when you get some pecking and, and some disorder and drama. Uh, and you've know, you got to remember to increase the size of the feeders too. They need space to eat. Uh, we talked about quarantine. So, in a theory, go ahead, next. Um, wire cage works great. Patience is the key. Don't rush this thing. So, tell everybody. Don't put your birds all together and then run away for a wonderful two week vacation because you might not tell each other when you come back. Those birds are probably going to go along very well. So, one of the good things to do if you see everybody getting along is, and you're ready to put them all in the same place together and get rid of that separate cage, is right at dusk, 
take those younger birds when the, the older ones are up on the roosts. Get ready, take a look to you tonight. Put those other birds right in there next to you. And the theory is that they're trying to all of us get together and wake up as one happy family and look around and say, Oh, you must have been one of us this last night. Welcome to the club. So that's the theory. Not always happens, but I mean, it's it's a gradual process to integrate an already existing flock of hens and the birds. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> It's not, yeah, it's yeah. not easy. <laughs> um, I don't know that there's a perfect way to catch a chicken. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've never thrown a net on a chicken. I don't know. I don't normally need to catch them. Yeah, you know. I mean, if, if, if you're feeding them every day, they're going to know you. They're going to come right up to you. They're, they're going to, you know, the baby chicks going to know. Thanks. Right? Yeah. 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 So I think we covered all that. Just monitor everybody. Um, if you've got somebody that's uh, being a little aggressive, you may have to separate them uh, and, and start the process over. This sheet is in the back. I think it's a blue sheet. It's kind of things I'd recommend for you to have as your first aid checklist. Um, so keep that in mind. We're going to talk about a lot more of this stuff in, in the seminar next Wednesday. Next. Yeah, we talked about the cook shoes. Now, the other thing that I have a lot of questions on is molting. Who knows what molting is? Mm -hmm. Loosen their feathers, absolutely. Now, if you're going to buy birds this year, they are not going to molt or lose their feathers until 14, 16 months from now. So if you're going to be fine this fall, but next fall, 2024, usually happens every year after that. I don't know why it doesn't happen to 14 to 16 months old, but it does. It usually happens when the days start getting shorter and the light starts getting shorter. It makes sense to me why that wants them to lose all their feathers and regrow a brand new set of feathers when it's cold, but that's when they do it. So what happens during this phase, first of all, a lot of people say, oh my God, what's wrong with my chicken? It's losing all its feathers. And there's kind of a series of, of progression uh, of molting. Someone starts with the head and goes back. Um, so watch when that happens, then we go. But they're fine, they're just going up with the chickens, going back to the other side of feathers. Um, if you notice that there's patches just kind of random all over, that's something else going on that's not molting. That's probably a bird hen that's rooster uh, or another hen that's, that's just a little bit aggressive. So they typically stop laying eggs during molt. And the reason is they're trying to put all the resources, nutritional resources, back in the growing those feathers. Thing. So molt can last two weeks, it can last six months, it's just by breed, by bird. And every bird will do it. It's not just hands, it's roosters, it's ducks, everything after that first 14, 16 months. So we have a great product in the Nature Rise line called Feather Fixer. That's right. When we lose the feathers, we move to Feather Fixer. It's a higher protein, more organic minerals, and uh, more melatonin, just like hair and nails, protein and minerals. It gets them out of the faster, the thin feathers come back faster. It's also a great show of feet. So if any of the younger people are <coughs> or are showing your birds, that is the chosen product in the show field, show world, is this feather fix. Because when you go to a show, they don't judge them. Okay. Now, a few minutes to talk about ducks. We talked about a little bit of them. The same thing, you're going to still have to have a brewery, you're going to have to have water. I do, they don't need heat for as long as baby chicks because they grow faster. And, and they usually can go outside sooner because they get bigger faster. So, the only thing you're going to want to make sure is you have a, a source of water. When they get a little bigger, so they can dip their membranes in and stay. I think my next slide, I thought of. Uh, yeah. uh, so the other thing is, ducklings cannot have medicated feet. Ducks just can't handle the medication whatsoever. So you're going to want to make sure you're using up the nature wise, non medicated feet. Same thing, same process, but you still need to have them um, hydrated. Don't mix your species, they love splashing around. Um, Talked about all that. Okay, the other thing, we have two specific duck products, and you can go right to those slides. 
we have one that is a duck and all flock starter feed. It's actually a higher protein. So this is good for turkeys, geese, chuckers, any game birds, as well as ducks. Um, so this, it will be available here. And then also we have another product that's a regular duck pellet. And what this is a smaller part, it's a short duck pellet. Uh, so they can find it a little easier, especially with the size. Um, ducks have, a, have a, a couple of nutritional things that they need different. And they have a real, uh, they need more niacin in their diet to help development and brain development and also um, muscle. So the duck beads are formulated a little different specifically for those. Now, the other thing, ducks are semi-nocturnal. So while your chickens like to roost and sleep at night, ducks don't. So they're very active at night. They don't really need nesting boxes. Um, duck eggs are wonderful. They say they're absolutely common for breeding purposes and uh, for people that would have regular egg allergy, isn't it? Duck eggs are wonderful. Um, so they don't need to roost and they don't need nesting boxes. There's everything needed to so as I said, uh, you know, here come up, look at the products. Um, make sure you get your coupons. Oh, the other thing, uh, we have there's a couple different reward programs. Okay. So if you're signed up for Max Perks, go catch your Max, and we may have different rewards or, or discounts. Uh, some of their own country heritage feeds and some of the other products from their stores, not meat and country, but some are pet related. Neutrina has our own program too, and it's called Flat Perks. So if you're on this program and you're interested in using the Neutrina product, and any kind of flat on the bag, a lot of people say, What's the deal with flat? Well, I'll tell you a quick story. I worked for Cargill, which is the parent company that owns the Neutrina brand for 33 years. It still is a project in all And the company, McMillan, um, are their stock. And this is the, the plan is actually their famous company called uh, you know, their, their, this is their plan. So that's why we chose to put it on our bag um, for something like checkerboards or other things. We choose this plan. And I think it's kind of a neat thing because it does kind of touch the family members. So that's why it's called plan. But this program is really simple. Anytime you buy anything from Trina Plan, we are dog food. We have a great line of dog food, horse meat, and some fish, and chickens, anything. Um, the only thing you need to do is sign up for the program. Again, we'll show up for you. And set up your account. When you purchase something at any of the country mix stores, just take your features or your store receipt. And I don't care if it's got like mulch on it, and can't or whatever. Um, upload a picture to your account. You get a Point or 10 points for every dollar you spend. And those points add up. You know, those quickly. And when you get to certain different levels, you get this little thing, you know, that says, Congratulations, you got enough points for the reward. Do you want this reward or do you want to save up for more points? So it's pretty simple. You can get what you want. You can get cool things like some of the stuff I talked about tonight. You can get chicken and stuff in the food, which is what a lot of people love. Um, chicken hats, chicken shirts. So make sure you grab one of these too. And there's a special code on these cards. Um, we love coupons. And so there's a rewards code on here. It'll we'll get you another uh, not points for $10 off. So these, I don't, I have some more of these, but everybody make sure they grab one of these and you can sign up on that program if you're interested in some nutrients. A lot of information, and I really appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. What specific questions do you have? Uh, yes. Okay. You know, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, if they're going to free range, they're going to possibly go into your neighbor's yard. How many how big is your yard and how many of those you have? Mm -hmm. Third, it is what it is. Yeah, they 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 may want to roll. So you may want to more keep them in a run versus. Yes. You know, a couple of my friends raised chickens in the city, and they had a very small yard, and they had a fruit, and they had a lawn. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah, free range. I mean, that's that's fine. That's perfectly fine. 
free range is when you basically let them outside of the run to try to play. You know, but they, they like I said, they're incredible. They will go out and they will eat bugs. Yeah. Um, stuff all day long. Um, it's a, it's it is more natural. But the thing is, when they come in at night, they sometimes aren't quite as hungry for for regular food. So we actually have a product um, that's called Cardigan. Cardigan. Um, I recommend this for free range birds because it's got a little bit more stuff in it with high energy and protein. Also, it's soy free. So if you want to go healthy diet and with some omega 3s and 6s, like your vitamins, that's good, which you see advertised. Cardigan is great. So it's great for free range birds, but also great for hard pets. Because they will probably eat a little less total feed because they're all full of um, worms and stuff like that. But yeah, that's personal preference, free choice or, or because free range or or the good luck. Yes. Ducks definitely will. Yeah. Your chickens. You have a water source? I don't have a pond or anything, but I mean, it floods a little bit by where they are sometimes, and we know where all the. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's, you know, you're going to have it going down. It's not going to go down. If, they, if you're giving them fresh water, they're probably going to go to that source first. Ducks, I'm not going to guarantee you're going to go back. Chicken, I mean, if chickens are outside and rain, that's fine. Just those baby chicks, okay? I mean, and you don't want your chicks going out in the winter time to get all frozen up with snow and everything and then going in, you know, and have a draft. You know, they'll dry out fine. But if there's a draft coming through that poop at night, you know, that's that's a point where they may be. Say that again. Shovel their oh they're well I mean if they're gonna if they're gonna if they're gonna go outside they're they're gonna get wet but if they go in and there's no drafts they're gonna be wet they're pretty they're pretty hardy just the babies with the little pin feathers that that are really the big concern yes now that's something that probably you can talk more about with some of your gardening sessions of composting and all that absolutely I'm not an expert at it but yes. Yeah, and you probably have there's probably articles in that whole thing there about when you were in class in that chip life thing. The, the chickens, you know, they're just like your horses or dogs, they're gonna get wet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's not a bad idea uh, because the rooster will take care of them, kind of protect them. Um, the only thing you don't want a rooster that gets aggressive with kids. Um, so I think change you always said that one rooster is going to make six girls, um, you know, and, and he'll kind of herd them in the poop at night and, and keep an eye out on them. Uh, but, you know, half and half, no, no, no. And that's the tough part about getting straight on. You just, you just have to know what you So that's why if you're on Facebook, oh my Lord, there's so many people on Facebook with chickens right now. Okay, get rid of rooster. Or, you know, and that, you know, that's the big thing. Get that. And, you know, they do crow every night. And they get nice and dry. Yeah. 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 I don't. I would say any of the friendlier breeds. Yeah. Yeah. Neutrina World is the website, is our website, yes. All this food is actually made in all New York, uh, in our food plant, in all the Where did it come from? The grains and everything? Um, everything is coming local. And we test every single ingredient that comes into our plant before we unload the truck. So we do mycotoxy tests, uh, which are mold tests, aflatoxin tests. Um, we will only buy grains that are a certain test weight. So we're make, making sure we're you know, getting the right test weight. Um, we do send loads of that. I mean, we, we, we make a lot of them. <laughs> and and they're, 
which are will not get loaded at our, our facility until we run those tests in house. And then we also save a sample of every single product we make for 90 days. So they're actually in our feed mill. It's just a huge room of totes with samples of every single feed we make for every day and we use that. So if you do ever have an issue with the product, we can actually go back to tag on every bag. There's a lot number. I can tell you by looking at the lot number of the box definition, what, what plant came out, what time it came off the line, what day it was being shipped, uh, the bag, you know, who was working the bag. Everything is robotic, though. There's, there's not many hands touching anything except to take one finished by a CD and put it on the calendar. Thank you very much. Well, well done. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I mean, we, there's tons of different ingredients in that. Um, you know, we we source ingredients from wherever we can, and you can tell we're talking. We, we try to look green so as small as possible. Um, vitamins and minerals, some of those may come from out of state or something not really manufactured, uh, but we're very, very slow. And we're actually um, one one of the companies that certified. Uh, which CASIP is like one step. Um, it, it's it's the same certification that we have for food, our food diligence, because part of the agriculture is to our food or things that go with the food. So, if you, you know, we manufacture, we, we process flour, we, we process honeysuckle turkeys and shade river turkeys, um, Indian river fruit um, juices, that's cargo. So, there's a ton of different cargo brands. Uh, that are out there you can at Subway uh, or Pizza Hut, any of like the bread, you know, the flour, those you know, process flour, flour, and those byproducts from flour usually come into our emails if, if they're meeting those requirements. So you got to use it somewhere. Yeah. I heard you wow, it's really hard to find a poultry vet. Really hard. Um, there are some. Um, some of the things we're going to cover next week, as far as common illnesses, respiratory things, that might be uh, something that you can handle at home and give you some, some ideas. Uh, there's some really good products on the shelf that you can buy uh, you know, to, to help feed those sorts of things. But they're pretty expensive. I mean, the dogs, really. I mean, we've had dogs in the top of the book for a couple of years. So I'm not even just like, I'm just sad. But sometimes it's chickens that make the dogs and someone just sits out of the way. Their dog will know to stay away from them. Or at least here. Yeah. 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 Ye